With a stay-at-home order in place for every part of the province, it can be hard to get a sense of what's happening in your own region, let alone beyond that. Here to at least give us a sense of their areas in Red Rock on the north shore of Lake Superior, Charnel Anderson, who covers the northwestern part of the province for Ontario Hubs, and in London, Ontario, Mary Baxter, who covers the southwestern part of the province. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Hi, Jaya. All right, Mary, we're going to start with you. Catch us up to speed. What progress has Southwestern Ontario made in trying to contain the virus? Last year at this time, we were seeing uh, a lot of uh, uh, outbreaks amongst the farm worker communities in, in this region. Uh, and it was very concerning. The outbreaks were very large. Uh, they were due to a lot of different factors, uh, one of them being uh, congregate living on, on uh, farms where the living conditions weren't all that great. It was hard to uh, physically distance. It, uh, and then there is the lack of personal protection of equipment. Uh, this year, uh, there's been uh, a lot of work done on it. There's there's still problems that exist, uh, but we're also seeing some of the benefits of that work. So so things like a recent uh, introduction of a program, a pilot, a provincial pilot to vaccinate uh, migrant farm workers as they arrive in, in Toronto. Uh, and then there's been Ministry of Labour in inspections of uh, farm workplaces. And we're seeing a bit of a result you can see in Windsor Essex, for instance, uh, their their rate of an infection and their outbreaks is very low. Overall in the province, the, the outbreaks on farm communities is very low. Now, Charnel, you were on the show just a few weeks ago. Uh, we were talking about a spike in cases in Thunder Bay. Those have since come down. Want to get an idea of what those feelings are in the city. Will they be able to keep those down? In March, if you can uh, remember, at that time, Thunder Bay had the highest rate of COVID-19 per 100,000 people in the province. Um, and so since then, um, at, at about the beginning of April, cases have been on a downward trend. Uh, so this week, I believe the highest number of cases we had was 13, which was on Monday. Um, and as of Thursday, there were four new cases announced for a total of 61 active cases. So we're doing a lot better than we were. Um, however, there are still 10 people currently hospitalized with COVID-19. And so the medical officer of health is worried about, you know, that we may be lagging behind our Southern Ontario counterparts um, because there are variants here. Uh, there have been a number of variants found in Thunder Bay. We're not sure what kind they are at this time. They haven't been identified. Um, but there have been quite a few cases of the UK variant found in places like Dryden and Kenora, um, and that's in the Northwestern Health Unit. So, you know, it's important that we stay vigilant now, you touched on Dryden. Um, of course, Thunder Bay is just a very small part of the region that you cover. How about the rest of your region? How are they dealing with cases there? Mm -hmm. So we have been um, seeing some growth in the Northwestern Health Unit. Uh, so in places like Sioux Lookout and Emo, um, there's actually an outbreak linked to an Easter church service in Emo. So right now, uh, in total, they have over 50 active cases of COVID-19. Um, and so the bulk of those cases, uh, more than half, I believe, are in Sioux Lookout. And the medical officer of health there, Dr. Kit Young-Hoon, you know, she's concerned and she's telling people, you know, we still need to adhere to these public health guidelines. Now, Mary, London Mayor Ed Holder said that the city, without question, should be con considered a provincial hotspot, but added the extra resources and targeted vaccine rollout are no silver bullet. Now, he was quoted in the London Free Press this week saying, the best way to handle this issue is to stop the congregating, to stop the issues around not wearing a mask, he said. The health unit can do everything it does, but until people take individual responsibility, none of this means a damn, hotspot or otherwise. Mary, has there been some confusion about hotspots? Obviously a hot topic, uh, but you know, with vaccine distributions as well in London? Well, when hotspots were first rolled out uh, by the province, uh, they were they were based on postal code. And for southwestern Ontario, there was only one hotspot identified, and that was in and around Elmer. Uh, but what's happened in London is uh, in in and around Western University has seen uh, a series of outbreaks in its its student population. It's been so so extreme that uh, Western has sent students home early, and uh, so in the postal code around that area, there's also a very large student 
student population. And they've been seeing uh, rates of positive COVID-19 uh, tests there uh, up around 29%, which is like right up at the top of the, the, the province in terms of those infection rates and I, I, or testing rates, excuse me. I, and so that that's, they want to see that area declared a hot spot. I, and not only local politicians, but uh, uh, area MPPs as well have been calling for that. Charnel, I want to pick up on that. Um, you know, as we mentioned, your region is quite vast. Is there concern that people are able to get to the vaccines um, in time? Yeah. So, I mean, what I will say is, uh, you know, none of the regions here have been designated a COVID-19 hotspot. Um, that being said, there does seem to be vaccine clinics popping up, uh, you know, quite quite often. So there are a number of pharmacies uh, in a number of communities in the Northwest who are administering the AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, but the issue as is an issue, you know, in most rural communities with a lot of things is transportation, you know, access to these vaccines. Uh, for example, my neighbor, um, she just went for her first um, dose of the vaccine today, but she had to go to Nipigon, which is, it's about a 20 minute drive from Red Rock, but she doesn't drive, right? So, um, so actually my parents ended up taking her, but you know, this is a challenge for people living in smaller communities that, you know, maybe they live alone, maybe they don't drive because you can't, you can't just hop on the bus. You can't call a taxi. So, you know, I think one option that would be useful for people in the Northwest would be perhaps a mobile clinic that goes to people that can't go to these clinics. I actually want to uh, pull up a clip from Thunder Bay Mayor Bill Morrow, who was on our show earlier this week talking to Steve Bacon. Let's have a look at that. If the medical advice is that the lockdown stay at home order is necessary to contain the variant, if that's what's driving the current policy position, then I think we can all accept that. But I think if that is what's driving the policy decision that the province has made, then it needs to be tied to very close plan rollout. Because if Thunder Bay, with our numbers going down significantly over the last three weeks, is included in this pan-provincial lockdown because of the variance potential you know, increase in the numbers, then I think that we need to be accommodated the same when it comes to the vaccination rollout across the province. Charnel, he touches on that. But why is it important that uh, Thunder Bay get its fair share of vaccines in good time. You know, I think he makes a fair point in that if these, uh, if these restrictions apply province-wide, then, you know, the vaccine rollout should also uh, reflect that province-wide approach. Um, because I think, you know, people in Thunder Bay and the Northwest generally sometimes feel like an afterthought for the provincial government. Um, one example of that would be uh, back in March when we had this spike in Thunder Bay, a number of leaders, including Mayor Morrow, were calling on the province to designate Thunder Bay a COVID-19 hotspot. And, you know, that never happened. Um, however, we did get an additional dose of, I believe, um, a thousand vaccines and, you know, the numbers have gone down since then. Um, I will say that Thunder Bay has done a remarkable job, um, in terms of getting vaccines into people. So at least 45,000 people have received the first dose of the vaccine in Thunder Bay, which, uh, works out to about 25% of the population. And so that's compared to 15% and the rest of the province, you know, it's, it really is remarkable and we're on the right track. It's just, we need to keep those vaccines flowing in order to kind of keep up this pace and keep the cases down. Very good. Now, Mary, I want to actually pull up a photo that you took uh, in your neighborhood in southwest London. It says, it's a sign here that says, no more lockdowns. Is this any indication of how people are feeling right now? Certainly, there's a lot of frustrations out there. I spoke to uh, someone else who also had a sign up on his lawn. Uh, he is amongst a, a lot of people in our area, unfortunately, that, that think that uh, COVID-19 is a hoax. Uh, there's um, been protests. Uh, there was one in Simcoe last weekend where hundreds of people turned up. Uh, there's rumors of another one that could be happening in Strathroy this weekend. So there's there's a lot of, of, of frustration um, amongst people in, in having to stay at home. Charnel, uh, we have about 30 seconds left. I want to ask you about, touch on that frustration, small businesses. They haven't been open for quite a while. Uh, what are you hearing from them in northwestern Ontario? Yeah, I had to check because I didn't even remember last time, um, you know, businesses were allowed to be open. But there was a period since about December of 12 days, um, the end of February, 12 days where businesses could be open. So 
you know, business, business owners are frustrated. We had um, a salon owner from Thunder Bay on the program not too long ago. And I think he speaks for most people, particularly in the personal care industry, who have not been able to operate their business for months on end now. Um, and, you know, as I said, cases are on the downward trend here. And if I think if things continue this way, you're going to be hearing calls for um, the province to go back to the regional um, restrictions. It'll be interesting to see what happens after this. Uh, Charnel Anderson, Mary Baxter, you guys are the Ontario Hub journalists covering Northwestern Ontario and Southwestern Ontario. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Taya. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.